recording. There we go. Now, uh, last week, I sent out um, my uh, sample final exam and um, hoping everyone got it. Let me uh, let me do my screen recording now. There we go. Now. OK. Now looking at the calendar. After this week. We've. We've only got two weeks of classes left. I mean, uh, the time has just vanished. I think Einstein wrote a paper about that. Um, so um, I um, posted uh, on Moodle, and I think I may also have emailed it to everyone, uh, sample final. And what I want you to do is to look through these questions. Here it is right here. And um, so I have a whole bunch of questions on here. And I sent this out to you uh, so you can look through these things and uh, learn how to do the questions. I have solutions, and I either have the solution explicitly written out in a lot of detail, or I might uh, give you a reference on where you can find the detailed solution. And my in intention is that uh, on the last week of classes, uh, uh, we'll do class like we normally do. And then um, I will post the, the final, which you can expect to be uh, contain questions on it that would be a subset of these questions and similar to these questions, if not identical to these questions. So I'll post the final. And then if you've gone through this sample final and uh, also the questions that are here on the syllabus where I put questions after every set of videos, so if you've gone through the solutions on these questions, then you should be able to really pretty much almost copy and paste those solutions uh, into the final exam. So I want you to uh, generate a document, let's say a Word document, turn it into a PDF, uh, and then email it to me. I think I mentioned that. Uh, so let's say I give you the sample final on uh, on Tuesday after class. And then I'll let you take it home and do it on your own. Um, and you can look at any textbooks, any online references. You can basically you know, access any information you can find uh, to help you do it uh, if you haven't looked at any of the sample questions. So you have access to everything and uh, then put your solutions to the questions in a file and email me the file. And then, um, so I will have your Solutions to the take home final. I have uh, the results from your doing the 
in class quizzes that I gave, it seems like a century ago in the first part of the semester when I gave you quizzes in class. So then I'll just take that information and use that to assign grades. And I want you to turn in your answers to the sample final uh, on Friday the 17th. That's, that is scheduled to be the very last day of classes before any of your other final exams start. So what I'm trying to do is uh, allow you to do this final, finish it, and turn it in uh, before your other finals start so they don't interfere with your other finals and your other courses. So that's uh, that's my strategy there. And um, now I've uh, every now and then I add some things here. Here's the uh, our our syllabus. And I think that right now we're looking at the network layer and um, typically that net uh, the videos on the network layer are have to do with routing and how routing is done on the internet. And um, there are several ways that people have tried doing routing. Uh, and um, so these are the, the videos. There's three videos for today and then three more videos listed for Thursday. Um, of the videos, the, um, the distance vector routing uh, was used at one time in the uh, in routing in the internet, but more recently, these techniques related to here the link state routing are what's used, and link state routing finds shortest paths through a network using the so-called Dijkstra algorithm, and the Dijkstra algorithm is described in this video right here. Now. I've added a second video. I did this a few days ago about how the Dijkstra algorithm is used. I seem to recall that you, uh, that Professor Fayez may have talked about this in the um, algorithms course from the fall semester. I, uh, I guess I should, uh, I guess I should ask him, but the, the Dijkstra algorithm, I, I have a vague memory of him talking about this a little bit. And um, typically, the Dijkstra algorithm is implemented using the greedy algorithm to do the, uh, to do routing. At least uh, how it's described here, this is the video from the textbook author. And the way he describes it uses the greedy algorithm. And then this video is um, also uses the greedy algorithm. Now I put this video on there because I think that the, the guy who does that video, actually, I think he does a pretty good job. I actually think he does a better job than a textbook author does. And, um, I'll just give you some idea here what it's so you about. you want to be a software engineer at Google? Go to algoexpert.io. Pick a question. Read the prompt. Talk with this Dijkstra algorithm. This algorithm is for single source shortest path problem. If a weighted graph is given. Okay, now I'm not, I'm not going to go over this in, in class right now. Cause you can go over it on your own. But... Um, yeah, I've looked through uh, several online videos, and uh, I think this guy does a pretty good job. He probably does a better job than I would do because uh, 
I think he's actually practiced it and rehearsed it. And he describes how to do the Dijkstra algorithm, or at least the version of the Dijkstra algorithm that is based on the greedy algorithm. So um, I think you should um, you should look at that. I've added the link. Now, so th these then are the videos um, on the network layer. Here, there's these three, and then these three. And then we've got, like I said, there's like two more weeks. So there's the videos for next week, and then there are the videos for the last week. Uh, and then you've got the... Uh, the final, and, and that's it. Now, these are the questions here. If you haven't looked at them already, why don't you, you know, spend some time and look at them and uh, see if you understand how these solutions work. And uh, you can certainly talk about them amongst yourselves. And um, then if you want, uh, next week and or the week after, we could talk about any questions you might have. I have a few questions here that go all the way back to the first half of the course. Um, I can remember the first half of the course, we talked a little bit about Euler's Toshin function. I have a question about that. And um, I'm pretty sure you probably have forgotten everything about Euler's Toshin function. So you might have to go back and look that up. Uh, and uh, I have a few probability questions on here which I've been a, a little bit concerned about because um, I'm unsure as to uh, what your background is on probability and statistics, uh, and therefore I'm unsure on um, your ability to actually answer these questions. But... You're still you're taking a second semester in statistics right now. Am I right about that? Yes. And um, so, um, so I tried not to make these questions so overwhelmingly difficult in terms of how well you have to understand the probability and statistics in order to answer the questions. Um, some of the questions, especially the ones that I gave you a few weeks ago on probability, are a bit challenging to actually go through the solutions to the questions. Um, and um, the ones where you had to do these summations uh, those are a bit challenging, which is why I posted the videos about them. But I don't think any of these questions are that difficult. Uh, and I think that they're fairly straightforward. And, um, and like I put the solutions on here that you can look at. So the worst case situation is that on the final exam, I would give you a question that's like one of these questions, but perhaps with some of the numbers changed. So because I, I want to test to see if you understand the concept, um, I, I'm not I'm really interested in do you understand the concepts. It's not like what you're probably used to, particularly from high school, where you have to get all the numbers right. Um, you know, in the real life, in the real world, if you're solving mathematics problems, you have a chance to go back and check and recheck and recheck again 
your answers. And um, you know, typically in class, you sit down and you take an exam. You don't have unlimited time to recheck your answers. So, you know, I, what I'm interested in is do you understand the method of the solution more so than uh, getting all the numbers perfectly correct? And my guess is probably in your high schools, getting the numbers right was the most important thing. So that might be a, a little bit different. Uh, I used to tell my students back in the day when I um, taught at Purdue, um, I probably said this to the rector because he took courses from me back there. I would tell the students, if you don't understand how to do a problem, write something down because maybe I'll, I'll understand what you're trying to do, even if you don't understand what you're trying to do. That was a little joke. Um, and um, so look at these, look at the sample final, look at these videos and the questions that follow on the videos. And um, so it's the most important thing I want you to do is to look at the questions and try to understand the solutions to the questions. That's how I'm trying to encourage you to learn the material is by being able to do these questions. Okay, now with that, let me come back to uh, showing you my wonderful face here. Oh, wow, I'm now looking at all you guys on here. Ah, there's some scary people. Anybody have any questions? Ozar, you always have a question. You have any questions? Right now, I don't have, sir. I'll email you. Like, right? I was okay. just checking your file, but so far I don't have any. So did you get you got the email last week, but you you hadn't looked at it. Um, no, I mean I I started looking at it, but so far I don't have any questions. Okay. Um. Well, you guys know where to find me. I, I'm always telling you, don't be afraid to uh, contact me. The worst thing that can happen is I won't answer. Um, and um, how are your other classes going? So far, OK. Wow, so far okay. That um, that sounded to me like you weren't quite sure. I I don't say so, but it's just okay. Okay, getting used to this online system. Yeah, you uh, are you uncomfortable with it? As um, I was saying earlier, I don't know if you were all listening to me at the time. Um, I had a meeting with the other computer science faculty uh, a little while ago, not too long ago, and the rector was on there, and uh, he uh, he was saying that they have decided, although they haven't sent out an email yet, maybe, but they've decided that the classes in the fall are going to all be online, at least for the start. So your classes are going to be online. Uh, so I, I hope that you are having um, uh, no serious problems with the online classes. Sometimes students can have difficulty 
adapting to the online classes, uh, especially if you doing in person classes and then all of a sudden switch to online. Um, it can some people have problems with that. Um, and um, I, probably more faculty have problems with it than students, but um, so I hope this is going OK for you people. Um, the faculty in computer science seem to be pretty happy with it. Um, I know that they're working a lot harder. Um, and uh, with it, but they uh, they seem to to think that the classes are going okay. Um, what do you think are the if you had to point to one specific major difficulty, what's the biggest problem that you have with the online classes? So, in my opinion, I would say uh, some faculty members need to improve their approach. You mean like me? No, I would just say uh, the ones who are doing like... So, in your case, you are just showing the videos, right? And we are just watching it. But in other uh, classes, I would say uh, how they are doing the assessments maybe or when they're giving it assignments Hello. Uh, 